Oh boy. Things just keep getting worse for the Fallout 76 franchise. And today, a court ruled that they must refund customers because they have, quote, likely, Zenimax admits it likely misled customers following complaints over problems with servers, lagging, graphic, and visual problems. Pay attention now, because if you purchase Fallout 76 and you fall into the areas where this is important, you can get a refund. And also, if you're in areas where it isn't, I think it's fair that we leave a like maybe on this video, a comment, and share it with uh, your friends so that we can pressure Bethesda to offer other customers the same refunds. You know, because that's the right thing to do. Now, a week ago, Fallout 76 went through a tumultuous week. Two weeks ago, roughly, or 10 days ago, they had announced that they were delaying their big content expansion that's going to add NPCs and make the game maybe somewhat closer to what people had expected up front. And the Wastelanders expansion is something that I am looking forward to. I'm legitimately being honest here that when that rolls out, I may try Fallout 76 again. After all, I bought it anyway, so it's not like it's going to cost me anything to try it. And for the players of the game, the 500,000 to a million players that are still in the game now, you know, as much as everyone dunks on Fallout 76, at the end of the day, I still want them to have fun because just because the video game isn't for me doesn't mean that I don't want them to have fun because video games are an overarching category and really I just want gamers to have a good product. Now today, it was announced that ZeniMax must refund customers. The Australian Competition and Consumer Committee, which enforces consumer protection laws in Australia, has ruled that Bethesda's parent company, ZeniMax, must offer refunds for certain Fallout 76 customers. Under Australian consumer law, customers are able to request a refund if a product is faulty or drastically differs from the description. And ZeniMax is in trouble for suggesting this option was unavailable. In a statement, the ACCC explain that immediate aftermath of Fallout 76 release, it received multiple consumer complaints con claiming that ZeniMax told customers they were not able to request a refund even after experiencing technical difficulties, such as, quote, problems with the servers, lagging, graphic, and visual problems. Now, if you remember the state that Fallout 76 launched in, it was atrocious. It's obviously come a long way since then, and it's frustrating that developers continue to release games in broken, buggy states, and people just keep accepting it and forgiving them when they, quote-unquote, get the problem fixed. Look, what about all the people that paid $60 up front and the game was unplayable and they just quit and never came back? Because I'm going to guess that that's the majority of people. What about all the people that didn't have the time or patience to wait for you to fix, wait for you to provide the game that you sold to them up front? It makes me miss the days so greatly of disc games. Yes, they weren't always perfect off the disc, but you knew what you were getting into and you knew that publishers had to work a little bit harder because they didn't have this endless patch cycle that they could just fall back on to fix their laziness. As part of the ruling, ZeniMax has admitted likely they were likely to have misled certain Australian consumers about their rights to refund when they experience faults with their Fallout 76 game, according to the ACCC. ZeniMax has also agreed to amend its customer service documents to clarify consumer rights under the ACL. If you're hoping to take advantage of this particularly particular enforceable refund ruling, however, there's a caveat. You must have contacted ZeniMax between the 24th of November 2018 and the 1st of June 2019 to ask for a refund. And you've got to be Australian. You can check out the full details over here if it applies to you. It's unclear whether Australians who request a refund from June onwards will have success with ZeniMax, but at least they'll know it's an option. This, of course, isn't the first time the ACCC has been involved in a game dispute back in 2014. Valve was sued by the government for its cumbersome Steam refund policy. It's frustrating to see you know, countries like the UK 
and Australia be on the forefront of protecting gamers against taking being taken advantage of seeing though seeing as though you know consumer protection is something kind of important but ironically i want to finish this with a funny story and that is that fallout 76 buyers uh are being griefed they're being griefed in the game fallout 70 i'm sorry fallout first purchasers are being griefed much of this has to do with the benefits for Fallout first players, which gain their subscription, this according to the for now Kotaku.com. Given how much scrap and junk players need to use for crafting and armor upgrades, a chest specifically for storing crafting materials was widely requested by the community. The game has now an unending scrap box, but it's locked behind the Fallout first paywall. That's rubbed players the wrong way. This combines with other features, a tent, which can be propped up anywhere and instantly grant access to storage containers. Premium, premium players can avoid the hassles of collecting too many items to move, making looting an easier process. Private servers has led to accusations that preferential treatment when it comes to gear farming. It's possible to tackle public events like junkyard defense and privacy, scooping up gear and crafting materials freely, Players on a private server can, in theory, launch a nuke from on their server and end the higher-level enemies at their leisure to gain powerful items that they can then take on to public servers. And this is where the question is about pay-to-win. Uh, I don't have any problem with a private server, and I don't have any problem charging money for it. I've got to be honest with you. If that's what you want, and if it's a service that your customers want, and you have time to provide it to them, go ahead. I do question the timing, given that they've delayed their free content update for the customers in exchange for selling them this private server option at $100 a year, but that's neither here nor there. These features launch with their own issues. The scrap box seemed to consume players' items, and private servers were readily accessible to anyone of the owner's friends list, but their usefulness has angered average players. This isn't this isn't an insurmountable advantage when player notes on Reddit, but it is the first step on a slippery slope. If subscriptions don't sell well, as is uh, what stops the introduction of exclusive and superior weapons and armors, everyone is mad and afraid that your purchasing the sub will be enough to make it profitable and push the goalposts of what's acceptable in gaming further. Another said, stop killing video games. A viral tweet sent yesterday suggests that some wastelanders have vented their aggression by going after Fallout first players in Fallout 76. The game subreddit has posts about first hunters griefing premium players. One player stated that the behavior should lead to bans. Another joking, jokingly suggested a civil war. Bans have been handed out for egregious behavior before, including a lifetime ban for one player who wanted to eliminate certain types of people. These attacks on first players have been difficult to verify, however, and Kotaku has reached out to players for specific accounts. No matter what, trouble is brewing. Underneath the glitchy subscriptions, possible advantages, and griefing is a legitimate concern. Fallout first cost, the service costs 13 bucks a month or 100 bucks a year. And while that's not out of step with a modern MMO like Final Fantasy or World of Warcraft, Fallout 76 is a much more limited game. The result is the perception that premium players are spending money frivolously and in doing so encouraging further monetization. In a world of premium currencies, downloadable content, and loot boxes, it's an easy to see where frustration comes from, though it's definitely not worth taking out on other players. Now, it's interesting because it is a slippery slope, and it is funny to see the game players react. And it's also important to remember that, hey, you know, that there's a lot of people that still play Fallout 76. You know, the forum right now has... 3,300 people active, and I guarantee you that their Wastelanders expansion will bring players into the game, or at minimum, reactivate the players that paid $60 up front and quit in frustration because the game was either broken or offered very little to do. If you look at some of these posts, I'm done with this game because of the first Hunters. F you guys, I bought first on my, I bought Fallout first on my own terms and I enjoyed it, but these jerks had to hunt me down nuke my camp, and attack me rel relentlessly. The game is a problem, but it's community that's pushing it off the edge. You ruined a game I like because I used my money to buy something that didn't interfere with you at all. I got com, com banned on Xbox because I message everyone uh, saying, please stop killing me, you're ruining my experience. 
this is by far the most toxic community I've ever been a part of. I mean, I don't support griefing. I mean, I, you know, you look at like World of Warcraft, PvP, camping. I don't like that stuff. Uh, it, it does ruin somebody else's experience. I think that it's funny. Just because I think it's funny doesn't mean that it's okay. You know, it's, it's of course, part and parcel for living in the big city, apparently, if that big city happens to be Appalachia. Now, we'll have to wait and see how things develop with the Fallout 76 community if they're going to uh, pursue refunds in the United States. I think they should, especially if you did contact Zenimax or Bethesda and were specifically lied to saying, oh, well, we can't refund it. That is a dubious thing to say. And I'd be interested to see if that was anything public that they said or if they had private communications of that. I would love to get a hold of it. So my Australian viewers, please email me if you have this. And uh it just works, apparently. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.